on. I want to uh, tell this story here. I read it in this book. It was called uh, Chinese Parables. Uh, people don't understand that China was so diverse before the communists, man. So because they're communists now, people assume that they've always been totally whacked out when it's not the truth. It's like it's just like it is here. Sometimes you get more tyrannical people, and then sometimes you'll get good people. It's like back in the day when they said, Catherine the Great versus Ivan the Terrible during the next leader. It's the same type of a thing. Because when you allow, when you put leadership before mortal men, you, that look, it's going to be hit or miss. And you're going to get a lot more unrighteous people just by default than you are righteous. But anyway, you know, in a, in a way, it's like as righteous as you can be from your perception of what righteousness is. Let me Let me take this into consideration too. Because where your righteousness can go wrong is when it turns into... Just total self righteousism, and then that'll turn into humanism, and this all comes from China as well, in a way, because they just learned it from the Greeks. Um, there's a story; it's called the Selfless Friend, and basically, there's this town, and the neighbor, the neighboring province, is planning to come over and attack, and they've already attacked many other neighboring provinces, and they've already overcome them. So everyone in this town. Is running like Armageddon, like the, the, with chickens with their heads cut off. They're grabbing what they can carry, and they're running, heading for the hills, basically. This one guy, he has a friend who is a cripple, and he can't, he cannot escape, he can't run away. So the guy decides to himself that there's just no way he can part from his friend. So he stays, and him and this man, you know, they're basically in their little bunker, and everyone's gone and now they can hear the approaching chariots and horses and uh, footsteps and clamorings and these guys are ransacking the town looting and plundering and then finally they discover this man and they say to him they were like how dare you not run and flee aren't you afraid of us haven't you heard our reputation don't you know that we're taking over this area uh and there's no one even here to stop us but you are here and why are you here uh we want to know before we kill you and the man basically says he takes him to his friend who's crippled and dying basically and he goes look i couldn't bear the thought of leaving this man here alone to face this by himself and the the soldiers all of a sudden they stop and then their leader says let's let's leave this town uh I basically he's never met a selfless righteous man in his life and it was a man who was willing to lay down his life for his friend and these all the men left and left that town alone because he said for surely we found the land of the righteous and we we dare not tread on it any further and they leave see that's even when the unrighteous recognize the righteous and know better than to mess with it and this day our unrighteous people don't have that ability anymore to where you know there's certain people who deserve it then there's other people who don't people just treat as everyone as if they're already guilty and that comes from a rationalization mindset that either comes from some kind of lie or you just all got sociopaths psychopaths that don't care either way but back in the day look those type of people don't last long they don't keep people alive. They keep things in ever trouble and more and more trouble and more and more destruction. And there's many old tales of warrior societies that have these things in them. You know what I'm saying? It's like even these raw people still have a code of ethics. And, and people, a lot of the time, they want a boogeyman and paint these people out to be all savages. And they don't want you to know that they really weren't savages. And in all actuality... The people in our time are far more savage than them. 